All right, welcome to another episode of Data in the Hallway. I'm uh, here with my co-host, Daniel. How are things, Daniel? Like, looks like sun is still shining in the Netherlands, so enjoying the tail end of the summer, I guess, but. Yes, very sunny today. Also, cool. there's also a bit of rain. All right, so, cool. And uh, very excited to have two gentlemen from, uh, this is the first time we're having our community members from from the continent of Africa, Victor and Pestis. It's nice to have you join us from, from Nigeria. Uh, for, I mean, I'll, I'll let you to like introduce yourself and like, tell us how, how you, how long you you've known each other? I mean, Victor, you can you can go first, I guess. But awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ray, uh, for you know, an opportunity to be here as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So my name is Victor, and uh, I'm currently um, a graduate from Obafemi Awolowo University, uh, where I studied um, electronic and electrical engineering, and uh, majorly I and dive down in spaces centered around data science, uh, machine learning, and AI. And uh, I've, I've uh, you know, I've been in that space for, for quite some time now, uh, upward of about five years now. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much about me. Uh, it's good to be here. Go ahead, Festus. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Ray, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, I'm Festus. I'm also like a recent graduate from the University of Obafemiolo in Nigeria. and. We have, I majored in electronic and electrical engineering. And I also found interest in software engineering. So I'll say I'm a software engineer, but piloted and with a focus on front end technologies. And I met Prof Victor, I call him Prof. So I met Victor in the department and maybe like five years ago, but we got close around two years ago. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, university environments are a good place to make, make, uh, meet new people and make, make lifelong friends. So good to have you. And the, the way I met both Victor and Festus was that we just had our, uh, TidyB feature at Hackathon, which we, which we announced the winners of a couple of weeks ago as, as, a, as we're recording this. Um, and I was really impressed with, I mean, your, your project, um, and not just in terms of like an implementation, I mean, that's one of them, but, um, you know, outside of the hackathon, one of the things that I've been fascinated by were various organizations using technology, what I say for, for, to, to, uh, for social good. Um, and, you, you know, we'll talk about this in more detail. I mean, your solution was, uh, was geared towards helping farmers in sub-Saharan Africa, which, which I thought was really awesome. And the other thing that really impressed me about your project was that not only did you have a software uh, stack, but you also had your own, like an IoT device that, that you made on your own. So, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so having both, you know, software and hardware component to, to, uh, to your application, I thought was, uh, I thought was pretty amazing. I mean, it was, uh, you know, we had, I think, 100 projects that get submitted uh, during the two month, hack, roughly two months of hackathon. And it was really tough to just uh, pick like a handful of winners, like although yours didn't end up being one of the winners. Uh, but I thought I was still very impressed with, with what you're trying to do and, and also use of technology. So it's it's a great honor to have you as, as a community member. And uh, really appreciate you participating in in the hackathon. Um, so, I mean, first of all, I mean, let's talk about the challenges that farmers in sub-Saharan Africa are facing. I mean, what are some of their challenges, and how were you trying to uh, sort of help the farmers with uh, with your project? Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you for that question. Yeah. In Africa and Coming down to Nigeria, the, some of the challenges farmers face include, it's quite a, a lot, but then pertaining to our project, we have the issue of pests and diseases. Now as one, where, where disease can like devastate the crops and livestock, leading to significant economic losses for the farmers. And they also have like low agricultural turnout, the productivity, in, in terms of productivity at, at the point of harvest. And we also have like inadequate training on latest technologies. 
So when I come to our project, we using our project, we want farmers. Farmers can like leverage our project, our our product. Now it's no longer it's it's a product. So they can leverage our product using because our product our product offers AI crop detection, crop disease detection, which is one using that using that feature, farmers can easily know the type of disease that it's that I that has infested their crop produce. And through that, we actually recommend solutions and preventions, preventive measures and solutions to those to disease detected. And also we have the the crop recommendation. AI crop recommendation feature, whereby based on the soil nutrients of the of the farmland, then farmers get recommended crops to, to plant on on their farmland. And the IoT aspect is also actually cool because using the IoT device, farmers can farmers can be informed, well informed about the weather conditions and the soil conditions, like the nutrients of of the soil, the, the humidity, the the, the the soil moisture, the soil content, and all all the likes they can they can get well, they can be well informed about that. So that's how that's the way we are leveraging our product to, to help solve the challenges that farmers are facing in sub-Saharan Africa, in Nigeria particularly. And I think Victor has a lot more to say about that. What well, Victor, I think you're you might be muted. Um all right, yeah. So all right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should hear me clearly now. Uh, uh, first, as I said, you know, uh, um, most of it. Um, I mean, um, there, there are a lot of problems here in Africa, especially with uh, farming, uh, majorly because uh, a large percentage of, you know, uh, of farm produce come from small scale farmers uh, here in Africa and uh, particularly in Nigeria as well. And um, there are several problems, trust me, uh, ranging from access to funds, you know, land to unstable pricing. Uh, but then it now, you know, boils down to us to, you know, decide uh, what problems we actually want to solve from this and, you know, how we can potentially uh, support farmers. And that's why you'd see that, you know, our solution has, you know, uh, a range of tools, right, solving several different specific problems uh, because, you know, there are, there are several problems uh, um, that, you know, farmers face down here. Um, in Africa, uh, but potentially uh, many of um, what Festus has said is, um, you know, very correct, and um, that's why uh, we have, you know, several tools, you know, addressing uh, several different problems. Cool, awesome, yeah. I'll like in the in the episode description, I'll add a link to uh, your project submission, uh, so people can get a view of. There's like a, a four or five minute video clip of the demo or the product in the description of of the project itself. So. Uh, for people that are listening, if you're interested in more details, you feel free to go take a look at uh, their project page. So, uh, so when did you first get an uh, inspiration for for solving this problem? Is this? I'm, I'm guessing this is before the hackathon. Like you, you guys didn't just think of this, uh, the project or product now, uh, just because of the hackathon. But when did you first, you know, think about or 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 research this problem and 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 decide on on, on building a building a uh, potential solution to to address their needs. Uh, all right, uh, yeah. just to um, answer that real quick. Um, so definitely, um, we had you know the, the problem in sight uh, before the hackathon, and right. um, um, it's it's been it's been um, I would say we've been you know. Uh, brainstorming around it for upward of about let's say one and a half years now uh, mm -hmm. or almost two years yeah and um and potentially um some of you know what spawned uh um you know looking into that field looking into that sector uh particularly for me uh, was one of my interests um, in agriculture uh, particularly right and um i coming from you know uh, the ai space i saw a potential you know to be able to use ai to support you know uh, uh local farmers you know within uh, my country and uh, my community to actually tackle some of these challenges uh, yeah so that was you know some of what you know uh i would say you know were put together and uh, uh you know spurred us to actually focus on creating this product and and solving problems centered around the landscape Cool, cool. Yeah, so I mean, you mentioned AI. I mean, I, I think people will, I'm sure, hopefully will will take a look at your project page, but tell us a little bit about uh, the various technology components that are that are in 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 that are in your project, uh, so people get us get a sense of it. But... 
Oh, okay. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Sure. So, so, um, so conventionally we have um, a range of tools, and um, first one of the first uh, tools we have is uh, the crop disease detection. Uh, just as Festus has mentioned, um, where you know farmers can easily take a snapshot um, of you know infected crops, and um, we essentially um, you know infer the disease for the farmer. You know, we tell the farmer you know this is uh, the disease you know wrong with your crop, uh, and we don't just stop there as well. Uh, we also, you know, tell the farmer further about the crop disease that's been detected, as well as how to actually, you know, solve that disease or, you know, or mm -hmm. uh, solve that problem if it's solvable or, you know, if they have to uh, cut it off uh, to save um, other crops, right? Uh, we also have uh, a crop recommendation uh, tool as well, you know, where farmers mm -hmm. can um, get recommendations as to um, what to plant, you know, when they can plant um, certain crops. Uh, and um, uh, this... Um, I mean, th this um, idea or that part of the project was spot from uh, the idea that, you know, uh, new farmers um, are coming into the space. Uh, many more, you know, uh, young folks, Gen Zs are, you know, becoming farmers now and don't really have this eclectic range of knowledge um, of, you know, uh, some sort of uh, farming practices, right? Uh, so that's why uh, we also have that. And then um, we also have a, a wiki, uh, some sort of like a mm -hmm. Wikipedia right so where farmers can learn sustainable farming practices right because in as much as you know we're driving you know the pathway towards um you know good farming you know uh more productivity uh we also want to you know uh drive regenerative farming right uh so that farmers mm -hmm. can you know farm better uh, you know with less harm to the environment right so you would see there that you know there's a pattern towards you know sustainability and the um, output uh for farmers as well and um uh, lastly we have um the IoT device uh, as well, which is you know um, um, some of what uh, was strongly related with the hackathon, um, where farmers mm -hmm. you know can can you know they can easily deploy um, this IoT device in their farms, and we essentially take readings from you know the farm soil, the atmosphere, the humidity, temperature, and the likes, and we're able mm -hmm. to use those data to you know infer for the farmers better what to plant, you know, and when to plant. So you see that that strongly ties with you know our farming recommendation system. Um, mm -hmm. where you know yeah definitely uh, recommend certain uh, crops for farmers yeah so so those are you know uh, the range of tools that we have uh, currently right. on, on the platform sounds uh, sounds very useful so with a iot device what about the basic issues of like getting them like a network connection and power um, that also sounds like a big issue to tackle yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, in fact, the, the network connectivity is still, you know, something uh, we are currently, you know, iterating on um, because um, at the moment um, we have um, Wi-Fi technology enabled on the uh, on the IoT device, uh, which, of course, is not, you know, uh, sustainable for deployment purposes. Right. Uh, so we need something like uh, a terrestrial based network uh, using stuff like LoRa um, or even, you know, uh, local networks as well. Uh, but, but but essentially for power we are leveraging uh, a solar solar powered source. Uh, we have you know uh, a solar panel that you know uh, nicely fits into uh, uh, powering the IoT device, right? Uh, which of course you know is, is sufficient and promotes uh, sustainability. Yeah, but but for several iterations, uh, the network is still you know something that that is a big issue, uh, particularly for two reasons. Uh, one being that you know farms are mostly in remote areas, and uh, two network um, here in Africa is is not really a solved problem, right? Uh, so we have you know both the issue of you know network availability here in Africa as well as you know farms even being uh, in remote uh, locations. Uh, yeah, so but but definitely uh, in several iterations to come, uh, that that's a problem we we'll definitely uh, get over. Wow. Yeah, I, I, mean, I was about to say networking issues. I don't think it's just Africa. It's it's even in, I mean, I live in Silicon Valley. Sometimes like you have connectivity issues too uh, for, I mean, especially if you're dealing with like initial mission critical applications. I mean, for farmers, maybe it's okay to be down for five minutes, but um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a constant challenge, I think. So, uh, so, I mean, so obviously through these IoT devices, I mean, you're almost having like a stream of data, like a streaming data that's coming in, right? But uh, for things like uh, like on, on what to do, like, I mean, I don't know anything about agriculture. Like, let's say you detect that there's some fungal disease that's happening in in, in the certain region in, in, in Africa, right? Like, 
Are you accessing like a public database on what to do when when there's a fungal infection on the crops, or like what kind of data sources are you are you using um, to to give tips to the farmers on on what to do and potentially what to plant? So. Yes, uh, a very good question there. Yeah. yeah. So um, at the moment, um, at the moment, we currently use um, we just uh, pull data from the internet. Um, mm -hmm. So so currently, what we're doing essentially is. Uh, we want to have um, a very large, you know, um, repository. That means uh, like a database where we have, you know, um, disease and, you know, um, and curing methods. Uh, but but essentially, you know, uh, solutions to problem change, uh, they, they change very dynamically, right? Uh, you have uh, a solution today, you know, uh, tomorrow there's something better, right? And um, that, that's, that means, you know, uh, having a fixed, you know, uh, solution to a problem means... Uh, you have to definitely go there to uh, dynamically change that solution every time, right? So um, we are looking at, you know, leveraging um, maybe, um, you know, LLMs as well uh, to see mm -hmm. how we can, you know, integrate and, you know, prefer solutions to problems. Uh, but at the moment, what we do is, you know, when we get the, the, the crop disease name, uh, we look mm -hmm. at, you know, certain sources on, on Google, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Craft out the, um, the response, right? And, and send it back to, uh, to the user. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think like Daniel just asked a question and I brought this earlier about your IoT device. And I mean, you like if people go to the project page, you'll you'll see the photos of the device. And uh, obviously it was it was pretty cool that this is something that you two sort of made on your own. This reminds me of like the old early days of Silicon Valley when people were building devices in their garages. But I mean, tell us about the, the device and you know, where you were able to sort of source the components and how you went about building uh, this uh, this device for farmers. Oh yeah, sure, sure, yeah. definitely. Uh, um, so yeah, the IoT device was locally made uh, by hand <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and essentially uh, um, most of the components, I mean, all put together, uh, you know, the whole making process and the likes uh, cost less than, less than about 10 US dollars. And um, and that was because, you know, uh, the old device was locally made. And uh, mm -hmm. what we did essentially was, uh, first of all, to design the circuit. Um, I mentioned, you know, that I myself and uh, Festus have, you know, uh, a background in, you know, electronic and electrical engineering. Uh, so doing that wasn't, you know, much of a hassle, right? Uh, so we came up with, you know, the circuit diagram uh, for, for the IoT device. And um, then we have this, um, uh, um, like a copper board, right? Uh, because if you look at, you know, the, the plates, uh, or, you know, what some may call the motherboard of the IoT device, uh, you'd find that, you know, it, it's just a plain copper board, uh, which, you know, we then transferred uh, the circuit onto, right? So so there's there's actually a whole local process to it. And um, what we do essentially is um, we take the, you know, the, the printed circuit, right? Uh, we print it on a kind of glossy paper. Then we transfer that circuit onto the copper board. And then we pass it through um, an etching material. Right, so that etching material is a kind of chemical uh, that removes mm -hmm. uh, the other parts of you know the copper on the plate, right? Uh, that is, that's not part of the circuit. So essentially, what you have at the end of the day is you know a plain board, and you know the circuits uh, printed uh, like like as though you know you printed a kind of uh, copper printing uh, on, on the plate. Uh, so that's essentially how you know uh, we locally designed the board. Uh, then we just drilled in through. Uh, you know, the circuit and uh, placed the components um, over there, right? Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a pretty easy, uh, easy and straightforward process, uh, but it is, yeah, definitely look at what. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about Daniel, but it sounds complicated to me. It didn't sound very straightforward. But, <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I've done some stuff with electronics, but never actually got to uh, like designing my own PCBs. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool. So, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, want to you know talk a little bit? I mean, just a little bit more about your your technology stack. I mean, how did like a various features of TiDB uh, help with your project? I know like a serverless was what obviously one of the main themes. But beyond serverless, were there other uh, features that you thought were helpful, and uh, how you were able to sort of take advantage of? Uh, those features for your for your project. 
Um, yeah, so uh, for TIDB, TIDB serverless was really an amazing tool. And um, particularly, um, we explored um, how we could leverage it to, you know, this data from um, our IoT device, right? And um, particularly, what really fascinated me about, you know, uh, TIDB was, you know, the easy setup uh, in terms of, you know, the infrastructure. Uh, we didn't have to, you know, uh, go for, you know, a, a much complicated uh, data setup for uh, integrating with TIDB. Right. And um, particularly the, the real time, I mean, the real time uh, capabilities of TIDB was really amazing as well. And um, this, the simplistic nature um, of, of, you know, um, integrating um, IoT device with, with TIDB. Right. Uh, so th those were, um, I mean, some of the two things that, that really stood out. And um, I, I also got to, you know, play around with uh, the AI feature, uh, the AI SQL feature um, on, mm -hmm. on TIDB as well, uh, which was really amazing to, you know, uh, you just, you know, write some kind of uh, query, then, you know, you get the right. response uh, in, in SQL, right? So so those were really, you know, uh, some of the amazing things that I think I personally loved about uh, TIDB. And um, definitely I'm looking forward to, you know, even explore further um, and see how we can, you know, definitely build on top of TIDB, even after uh, the hackathon. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, not surprisingly, uh, like AI was a major theme uh, of, of a lot of the projects. And even for a few projects that AI wasn't very prominent, I think most of them use like a chat to query is, is a feature that Victor, you're referring to, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. You just type a question about, hey, what's the top product in this region? And then it, it generates a SQL statement for you, which is pretty cool. So uh yeah i I'm, I'm glad i was it was really nice to see that people took advantage of that that uh, it wasn't even heavily ad advertised as good, uh, but that was really cool so yeah <laughs> yeah cool yeah i mean the other thing you know obviously being a community manager in open source projects i love seeing projects being open source and i mean you took that route too i mean for people that uh, take a look at uh, Victor and Festus's project. The GitHub repository is open with open source license and all that. Like, uh, what's your what's your motivation for open sourcing? And obviously, you didn't have to do that. Like, I mean, you, I mean, you were, I mean, I mean, significant number of people decided to open source their projects for, for the hackathon, which I love. Like, what was your motivation? And uh, you know, I've been very like in general over the past like ten years or so. I've been working in various communities. I've been uh, impressed with like a lot of enthusiasm and open source. Uh, you know, a lot of good open source developers in 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 the continent of Africa. But yeah, tell me about your motivation and and what you're trying to get out of uh, uh, your your product or project being open source. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the question. Yeah, our our main motivation for making the project open source is basically to get more ads on the project. That's one. Get more ads on the project. Diverse ideas or inputs coming from people from across Africa. Because uh, in the long run, our main, main name is focusing on sub-Saharan Africa and yeah, Nigeria as a well. whole. And now we are testing with farms in our own location. So we definitely mm -hmm. need more people. We are building for the community. Definitely we need the community, community's input as well. And alone, we can only do so little, but together we can do much. And we definitely need to get more developers, like developers in the community here in Nigeria, in Africa as well. We need their input as well. And also for people that would love to spin off from what we have already. We've, cre we've created like a, a springboard for people that want to build more and build more of launch launch their own projects from our own in our own as a boilerplate or template as well and we are building we are passionate about technology building for system sustainability and impact definitely we need the community as well to bring in their input and also in the long run we are basically looking at having a repository or yeah, a repository of data from different locations different farms. And at the end, we definitely need to release this data to people to leverage. So I think that's it. And Victor, if you have anything else to chip into it as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely first of all, I said most of it, uh, but, but actually the, the, the key point there is, you know, we actually you know uh, need the community to actually make this possible, right? Uh, especially folks you know who are passionate uh, with us, 
um, you know, about, you know, solving the, the uh, agri problem here in Africa and uh, potentially, you know, scaling up uh, our so uh, solutions uh, within the continent. That sounds, uh, sounds great. Um, so with all the, the, the components that you uh, depend on and uh, work with, are any of those other components also made in, uh, in Africa? And how is the interaction with uh, like the other components? Um, yeah, so, so um, at the moment, um, we don't have you know, much dependence on uh, um, several other components um, within uh, the African open source space. Um, but definitely, um, you know, um, as we build further, we are looking to, you know, um, um, integrate them uh, and that. And um, something um, also that Festus uh, particularly mentioned was, you know, we also want, you know, uh, folks within, you know, the agri sector uh, to actually build on top of what we are building, right? Uh, so being like a kind of, you know, foundation uh, where other, you know, folks can pull our project and, you know, build on top of that uh, 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 and even build something better. So, so definitely, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in the long run, uh, we are looking to, you know, um, integrate and depend on, you know, several other um, open source projects as well. Yeah, for people who uh, want to look at uh, the GitHub uh, repository, I found some schematics there. Just so it's not only the code. There's like a complete thing with all uh, lots of information. Looks great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I think the other thing you both of you mentioned earlier was was sort of the wiki uh, area for for farmers, right? I mean, that's I mean, it's it's also the knowledge base that hopefully people can contribute to as well, in addition to like code and other technology stack components. So yeah, hopefully you know we can get more people to look at your project and and uh, uh, have more people get involved. So. Cool. So yeah, which sort of least? Yeah. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to say yeah, definitely. Uh, we need you know both technical and non-technical help uh, uh, on the project to make it you know uh, the best it can be. All right. Cool. Yeah. And then you're sort of. Uh, I mean, this sort of leads naturally to the next question I had. I mean, you're. You know. You, I think Festus, you mentioned that you want to go beyond being a project and make this a real product. Uh, so what are your sort of you know, plans for the next like a six to 12 months? Like, where do you, where would you like to take, uh, uh, you know, take the Agrobot project or product forward? How, how do you want to uh, progress it forward? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are looking to, um, I, I mean, definitely, uh, uh, I'll, I'll allow Festus to, you know, uh, go on that. But just to uh, mention some bit of direction, right? Um, we are looking forward to, you know, definitely um, scaling up the, the project, right? And of course, potentially building up um, several spin-off products from it, right? Uh, because we also, you know, are looking to solve several more problems. And uh, particularly uh, one I'll just mention is uh, the hassle of, you know, um, buying and selling of farm produce, right? Uh, which of course we, you know, want to integrate as, you know, a kind of marketplace and the likes. Uh, so what I would say is, you know, uh, there's so much more uh, that is coming, right? Uh, the vision is actually a very big one. Uh, it, it's really a broad one as well. And uh, we're looking to, you know, spin off several other products uh, from it, uh, which, you know, definitely uh, will need, you know, investors and uh, a lot of other um, components to actually put them together and make it a success. Cool. Okay. In addition to what I said, we're also planning to like conduct more feedback and user testing. That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Like we keep iterating, get more feedback from our users when they test them out. We are planning to work more with um, our agricultural extensions. We were initially working with our local school farm in the university then. So we are definitely looking to onboard more to, to, to work with agricultural extensions and then get more farmers test our products out as well and scaling as well we are looking up to scale definitely as we get more traction we are scaling the product as well thank you cool awesome yeah i mean i i would like to check back with you uh in a few months and, and see how you folks are doing I and mean, maybe we'll feature you on another episode and give give the latest update on on your product so cool awesome yeah, so, yeah that, that was... go ahead victor so yeah, 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 I was going to say that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, forward to you know uh, such other episodes. Cool. So, 
So the last question we've been asking, and this is very appropriate, because like I said, we, the, you're, you two are the first guests from, from the African continent. And, uh, you know, like I was talking to Daniel earlier, the only country in Africa I've been to is South Africa, and Daniel is about to visit Morocco. Uh, it's a huge continent. So we're, we're getting northern and sort of southern, southern extremes of, of the continent. But tell us a little bit about Nigeria and why 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 it's a good place for people to visit. I mean, tell us what you like about Nigeria and, and things that are, that are, that we should look forward to doing when, once we get a chance to visit, visit Nigeria. Okay. I think I should yeah. go first. Yeah. Yeah. Nigeria. Nigeria is actually awesome school for, for your first visit. There are actually a couple of tourist attractions like centers that you can visit. But you, you, might, you might get shocked because if you're entering through the Lagos, in through Lagos or the Lagos International Airport, I might get shocked about the entrepreneurial spirits of Nigerians. Okay. They are like hard work in a lot of people putting energy to their work. I'd be shocked that the work culture of Nigerians. Also, the food. Yeah, a lot of people in, in the African community, they do compare the Nigerian jollof to Ghanaian jollof or other African countries jollof rice. So you should, yeah. you should get to taste that as well. So the music, the food, the traditions, and it is actually, Nigeria as a country is diverse. There are a lot of tribes, a lot of tribes okay. in Nigeria. Cool. So, I awesome. that's it for me. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, first of all, first of all, has definitely said it all. <laughs> In fact, I have nothing else to say. Uh, yeah, but but essentially, the food, the culture, uh, that that's something uh, you know that that is um, you know uh, when you get to Nigeria, you find that uh, really entertaining as well. I mean, a culture in general, the music, the food. Uh, it's something you are definitely going to find uh, are very interesting. Uh, and I'll sure do and, and join you as well to visit, you know, uh, several tourist attractions, uh, centers, right. you know, around wherever uh, you'll be going to, you know, uh, definitely uh, have a feel of, of the whole uh, country. Yeah. Cool. And uh, just to also mention uh, as well, uh, uh, Festus did make mention of, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, uh, but, but I would also, you know, add to that, you know, uh, the community spirit as well. Uh, be because here in Nigeria, uh, we don't, you know, have uh, formal, I would say formal, you know, education in programming uh, and the likes, right? Uh, but, you know, some of, you know, the developers, especially here in Africa and particularly in Nigeria, actually go through, you know, the, the, the local community, right? So we have, you know, local communities for uh, different frameworks, you know, uh, from data science to Flutter to uh, software engineering, right? Uh, and, you know, that's something... Uh, definitely that I also find, you know, very fascinating about Nigeria. Uh, and sure, when you come around, uh, do well to, you know, uh, just attend any conference, any local meetup uh, here in Nigeria, uh, you definitely nice. find that interesting as well. All right. You, you saw me, I think. Like, I, <laughs> I think I also, yeah, on several, like, uh, travel shows that I watched, I, the, one of the themes I saw was the, the music of Nigeria was was a big deal. Like, they, they say, if you want to hear some cool music, come to, come to, Particularly Lagos is, is what I've heard. So, but cool. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. I mean, not only for appearing on our podcast, but also participating in the hackathon as well. I, I, I thought it was really, really a cool project. And it was, it was awesome to see, uh, not just in terms of technology, but the problems you're, you're trying to address. So, uh, well, thanks for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll keep in touch, and uh, and we'll see, we'll talk to your listeners on the next episode. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.